62 years ago, on the 1st of October 1960, Nigeria gained political independence from Britain. There was high hope on the birth of a great country. The founding fathers, such as Nnamdi Azikiwe, Abubakar Tafar Baliwa, Obafemi Awolo, Amadou Belu, and others struggled to put Nigeria on that road to greatness. But the first military incursion into our politics on the 15th of January 1966 truncated the match to greatness. So how did the country get it wrong so early in nationhood? Jide, this is a question that um, when we look at pre-1960, mm -hmm. the way the country evolved and the way the, the, the our colonial masters ruled us, and when we got independence in 1960, that first interregnum, it seems we did not recover from it because subsequent ones was tied to the reason the first one was executed. So before we started the program, we were talking about that. It seems we did not get over the 1960s coup. Yes. Um, I don't think that that coup was necessary. Uh, when you look at, yes, there were acts of provocation. Let's tell ourselves the truth. Mm. You cannot, um, as a historian, wish away some of the things that happened, the negative things that happened. But it was normal for a country just starting its life. Mm as an independent country. You just start in life, you don't start there at the all politicians, the politicians that come in, they would make it's mistakes. Yes. No, they would make mistakes. What we you actually will see as misbehavior. We are seeing worse things, even now. <laughs> are you saying, for example, that there had not been provocations since the first coup, or since 1999? Look, if soldiers were looking for excuses to plan a coup, between 1999 and now, you cannot tell me that there had not been some acts of provocation oh. on the part of the, um, the uh, civilian rulers. Yes. That in the past, the military could have used. Something not even as big as that would be an excuse. Yes, so, but the, the, the truth is, at that time, some countries, the other climbs, they were seen, our, our soldiers were seen military taking over power and all that. And they must have felt, look, if we did it, what, what will happen? We won't deny that that first generation of rulers made mistakes, but you can't deny their patriotism, their vision, mm. and in my view, even the, 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 the quality of execution, when you have a vision, is another thing to execute that vision appropriately. You can't deny it, but I think, I still think that Whatever it was what, that military incursion into our politics should not have happened. Over time, institutions, strong institutions will have come up to make our democracy stronger. And some of the leaders who are hungry for power, who pushed us to the precipice, I think time would have found a way to, uh, to sort out such leaders. But if we didn't give the political class, the opportunity to sort out its errors. And we just felt what we needed to do was simply uh, take them out of the scene. I think it was a mistake at that time, and um, it set us back as mm. a nation. No doubt about it. Mm. Mm. Wale, now, when we talk about um, Nigeria at independence, we had a strong character. Our prime minister was, you know, um, Tafa Balewa, and the president was Namdi Azikiwe. Yeah. These are people that, you know, agitated for 
independence for the for the country, but they were the first coup did not allow them to stay in office. Mm. I think I agree with Baba Gide. If you look at the history of almost every country in the world, it has always been very tough. But great countries that emerge out of these problems are countries that um, resolve these problems democratically. The United States, for over 200 years, Britain, they have had a lot of problems. But mm -hmm. instead of resorting to violence, they resort to constitutional means of resolving the problem. When the British came, they met great civilizations. You know, the Oyo Empire, flourishing, uh, the Bini Empire, the Kwarafa, multi-ethnic state, in today's Middle Belt, the Bono Empire. So what they did was to march the nation states together in 1914. So they were bound to be contradictions. But I think we should be honest that by 1960, when the British was living, there were three autonomous regions that were established based on the civilizations of each of them. And um, I think if we had allowed that system to continue, we would have made progress. And if you look at the pro progress we made in that era, in the 1950s, you know, either in the north or in the east or in the west, they remain uh, milestones up to today. If you are talking about Amandu Bello University, talking about UNN, talking about the RLWA business conglomerate, talking about the, I think it was ACB Bank that was established in the Southeast yes. then. We are talking about uh, Wema Bank. We are talking about a lot of, you know, within a period of less than 10 years. So uh, you know, each region was developing alongside, you know, based on its own uh, 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 civilization. So I think that coup of 1966 uh, was a setback. And it was made worse by the by Decree 34 mm -hmm. of 1966, which forcefully marched the three regions that were left by the British, you know, marked them together. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the 1963 constitution. That's after Aguirre took over. Yes, he took over and then and that was you know, a, he marched very, the regional the, and federal public civil service. He marched that all the mistake. commissions, yes. you know, and then created the unitary system. unitary system of government. I think that was a very uh, it was a major setback for us. If you look at the 1963 constitution, there are about 48 in exclusive list. Even arms and ammunition was in concurrent list. Mm. Restriction of movement of people in your region, it was in concurrent list. Even census. And even when you're talking really? about... census? Yes. It was, it was concurrent thing. list. Mm. You know? So, and you have a situation where um, even there were, uh, you know, missions, foreign missions. They had some partial authority. When you're talking about people relating... The Western region, for instance, had a mission in UK. East, another, uh, Eastern region also had its own, a Western mm. region. So, you know, there was some level of... It was and each region had its own constitution and mm. could develop at its own pace. So I think that uh, that coup of 1966 uh, brought uh, a, a paradigm shift in our history, mm. compounded by the emergence of Erosi, mm. which I think was... Um, it, it, it actually, actually created a major problem in terms of the ability of Nigeria to grow, you know, uh, without, um, uh, based on their own values and based on their own civilizations. Mm -hmm.